Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Hallertau. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play it, and I will be showing a full game today, although I will fast forward through three out of the game's six rounds. Now, before I move on, I would like to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because of the direct support that comes in through the Patreon campaign for the channel. If you'd like to learn more about that, then you can do so by going to patreon.com slash games, and I do hope that you would consider directly supporting the channel if you enjoy watching videos like this one. I'd also like to ask that if you enjoy this specific video, that you click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Alright, let's jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. The last thing that I'd like to mention is the fact that these colored cubes do not come with the game. I am simply using those to better differentiate between the players as we progress through the tutorial. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In the middle of the table there is an action board, and on it there are 20 different spots that players can activate to perform various actions. We do this by spending our workers, which are cubes, and we put them onto the lowest available spot. So the sooner you go to a spot, the less workers you have to spend for that specific action. Now, a main thing that we are doing in this game is growing crops, and each player has their own field area in front of them. Now, on this, there are individual fields, and we are going to plant our crops by placing these tokens down onto them, and later on, within each of the six game rounds, we are going to harvest the crops, turning them into resources that we can use. When we harvest crops, the fields will go down, and that means in the future, when you plant and then harvest, you will actually get less for it. And each round, every single field that is not planted will actually move up, so that in the future when they are planted, they will have a larger yield. When we focus in, you can see the position of the goods will dictate how many that we have. In this example, we have three flax, two rye, and one barley. Now these goods are very important, because once per round we are going to spend them in order to invest in our five different craft houses. We have to spend matching types of resources at numbers that will vary throughout the game, and as you improve these, they slide over to the right. Once all of these have slid over once, that means this house can shift over as well, and that number in the window tells you how many workers you get at the start of each round. So moving these over will give players more workers to do more things, and later on in the game, this can also unlock gaining extra victory points once the game is over. We will also get points for these different numbers that are to the left of the craft buildings that we make, and I'll describe the details of how that works later on in the tutorial. The final thing to mention in the overview is the fact that Hallertau has a lot of cards, and these are a significant part of the gameplay. Now, we all start with five cards in our hand, and we can gain more cards by visiting various action spots on the board, and many cards actually let you draw more cards that you can also play. Now, many of these cards just have a threshold that you need. For example, this card says you need three hide, three wool, and three meat to play it, but you don't actually have to spend these, whereas other cards do involve spending things in order to get various benefits like victory points or other goods. Now, I'll describe how all of these work as we go, but it's worth noting that cards can be played at any point, whether it is your turn or somebody else's, and throughout the game, many cards will likely be played. Well, I think at this point, let's now start playing the game, and as I briefly mentioned before, Hallertau will take place over six rounds. Within each round, there are ten steps, and we have a nice player aid here, which describes all of the steps with icons and with text on the back side. Now, let's go ahead and start the first round off with the first step, and this says that we have to remove workers from the action board. In order to do this, we have to focus on the action board, and as part of setup, we have placed a single worker onto the lowermost row in all 20 of the actions on the board. Now, what we do for removing workers will vary with the player count. If this was a four-player game, we simply remove all of the workers from the topmost row in all 20 of these action spots, which means technically all of these workers would be removed. Now, if this is a one, two, or three-player game, instead we will use this deck of quadrant cards. We will shuffle that up and then reveal the top one. Now, this will uh, tell you what you are going to remove based off of the player count. If this was a one-player game, you would remove all of the workers from the topmost row in all actions in the third quadrant, which is right over here. But since this is a two-player game today, this instructs us to remove all of the workers from the topmost row in the second and fourth quadrants. Now, that means we are going to remove all of these as well as all of those. And, of course, if this was a three-player game, we would remove from three out of the four quadrants. And the quadrants that are removed will vary with each of these cards. Now, technically, the first step of the first round is incorporated into the setup procedure for the game. Obviously, I did not do that for this tutorial so that I could show how this works right here at the beginning. 
Now the final thing that happens with these cards is we are going to remove this and not see it again for the game, and then put the rest of these over here for future rounds. Let's now move on to the second phase of the round, and this is where we gain new workers. Now, there are actually three different steps to this phase, and the first step involves us finding the next farmhouse card on our board, and we remove any sheep that are on top of it. Now, the next card is going to be the one that is highest up on this personal board of ours and farthest to the left, so that means that this is the next card, and if there were any sheep on top of it, we would remove those to the supply. Now, I'll talk about the details of how we gain and move sheep around later on in the tutorial. Obviously, we don't have any sheep to lose. So now, in the second step, we are going to take this card and leave it face down, and then put it over here in front of us. Now, after that, the third thing that we do is we take all of our workers for the round and place them on top of this card, and the number of workers that we will get is dictated by the number showing up through the window on our house. As you can see, that shows a 6 at the start of the game, so we will take 6 of these worker cubes and place them directly on top of that face-down farmhouse card. Now, I do want to mention that we have an entire deck of farmhouse cards over here, and at the beginning of the game during setup, we placed 6 random ones over here, and there are other ways to pick these up as we play. I'd also like to mention that there are four distinct uh, farmhouse decks of cards, and each of them has a different focus. This one in particular focuses on jewelry more than the others. Now, I will discuss how we gain and use jewelry later on in the tutorial. I just wanted you to know which of the decks we are playing with today. At this point, it would be time for the third phase, where players would generate income for all of their played bonus cards. But at this point, no one has played any bonus cards, so we can ignore the third phase in the first round of the game. Now, I'll describe the details of how that works later on, and that means it's now time for the fourth phase. Now, this is the action phase, and the way this works is in player order, we are going to take actions using the central action board to do a wide variety of things, and only once all players have decided to pass and not take any more actions will we move on to the next phase. With that in mind, before we go into that fourth phase, I would like to mention that in only the fourth and ninth phases of the game will players actually have decisions to make. The rest of these phases are simply procedural, and in fact, in all but the fourth phase, play can happen simultaneously, including the ninth phase. Now, I'll describe how that works later on, but at this point, we can zoom back into the fourth phase, where we can start taking actions on the board. So, let's focus out here, and I do want to mention that for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player, and because we have this rooster token, that means we are going to be the first player to go in this fourth phase of the game. Now, on a player's turn during the fourth phase, they can either send workers out to the action board in order to perform those specific actions, or they can send any number of their workers back to the supply in order to take a tool resource for each worker that they return. Now, I will show how that works later on. For the moment, I do think we should send workers out to the board to perform the associated action. So, here are our 20 different options that we can choose from for this action. Now, whenever we choose one of these spots, we have to spend workers equal to the lowest empty row associated with that action. That means if we wanted to go to the weekly market, we would have to spend two out of our six workers in order to place them onto that row and then perform the effects in that area. Now, with that in mind, I think we should probably go into a cheaper area first. Let's just spend one of our workers onto the lowest row over here in the sheep market. And after we place that there, we can gain the benefits shown over here on that action. In this case, we will gain one sheep and one hide. So we can take these from the supply and we'll start with the hide. Now this token right here is a resource, and in fact everything that you see out here except for these workers are considered resources, so that means sheep, tools, and these field tokens even are considered a resource. Now this hide is a resource as well, but it is also considered to be a good, and there are nine different types of goods that come in the game. Over here we have hide, meat, wool, and milk, and all four of these specific types of goods are called sheep products. And then over here we have the hops, rye, barley, and flax, and these four are considered to be crop type goods. The final type of good is clay, and that is obviously neither a crop nor a sheep product. Now we can take this hide token right here, that is a good, and we can take the sheep, which is a resource. And then depending on the different token types, they will go into different spots in our area. We can start with the hide, and all goods are tracked over here on this field board. As you can see, at the start of the game, we have a flax, a rye, and a barley, and all of them are on this row next to the one. That means at this point in the game, we have one flax, one rye, and one barley. Now, these are all goods, and this is where we store our goods. So we can take this hide, and we know that we picked up one hide, so we can track that this is just a single hide by placing it down here, where it is on the one row. 
If we were to get a second hide, we could put another hide token down here if we wanted to, or we can move this token up to show that this is now worth two hide to us. So obviously this is down over here, and then when it comes to the sheep, those are always stored over here on this sideboard. When we focus in more, you can see there is a sheep icon there, and the top leftmost sheep icon that is showing will dictate where this sheep goes. That means, as you can see, there's just one sheep icon, and there is an arrow, which means that this sheep will now go onto that card over there. Once we get into the second round of the game, this card will be removed, and that means in the second round of the game, if we were to gain a sheep, we would place it associated with this, which means it would go down on top of that card there. Now, if you remember from the second phase of the round, if there is ever a sheep on a farmhouse card when you remove it as part of that phase, then that sheep will be removed from play. So that means this sheep right now is not safe, and if we don't do anything with that sheep, we will lose it at the start of the fifth round of the game. Fortunately, there are ways to move these sheeps over to this spot, which makes them safe, and I'll talk about moving sheep later on. In fact, once these cards are all removed, for example, if this was the fifth round, then this would be the sheep icon we would go with, and that sheep would go directly into our pen down here. Now, that is obviously not the case, so we can place these back over here, and this sheep is on top of that card, so if we don't do anything about that by the time the fourth round starts, we will lose that sheep. That's finished our action, which means play can go clockwise over to the yellow player, and they've decided to spend one worker to go over there onto the fertilizing action. When we focus in, that says they can move up to two of their empty fields onto row five, and then they can sow a crop into one of their empty fields. So these are their fields, and the first thing that they can do is move up to two of these fields into row five. Now it's worth noting that all of these actions are optional. You can do just the parts that you want to, but they are certainly going to do this part. Now, as you can see, there are rows 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and these fields never go below the second row. So with this, they can move two empty fields, which means a field token with nothing on it, up to the fifth row. After they do that, they can sow one of their crops onto an empty field, and they have decided to sow this barley onto that field there. Now that means later on in the round, when this harvests, that barley will move over there, where it would then be worth 5 barley, so by doing this, they are gaining 4 barley through the harvest. Of course, that has not happened just yet. Yellow is done, which means we get to go again, and I think let's spend one of our workers to go over here to the nursery. When we focus in, that action will let us gain 3 clay, or we can take 3 crops. Clay is nice to have, but I think instead, let's pick up crops. Now, once again, crops are going to be the hops, rye, barley, or flax goods over here, and we can take three of the same type, or we could also take a variety. In this case, I think let's take one hops, one flax, as well as one barley. And then we can add this hops down there, but it doesn't make sense to add these tokens when we could simply slide the other tokens that we already have up. So that means that this flax will go up once, and this barley will go up once, to show that we just gained those two crops, and these tokens can go back to the supply. Our turn is done, which means yellow can go, and they've decided to go to the tool shed. That says they can take four clay, or they can add a new field from the supply onto their board, and they put it in the four location. So if they wanted to place this down, they'd put it here, because that is in the four row. Now they've decided they would actually prefer to have the 4 clay, so they can take this clay token and place it onto the 4 spot. After that we can go again, and there are still a few spots out here that just take one worker, so I think let's prioritize that and go over here to Busy Weekend. That says we can take a milk or a wool, and then we can sow up to two of our crops onto empty fields. So let's look back over here, and I think now is the time for us to take a look at the cards that we have in our hand. Now, cards can be played at any time, whether it is your turn or somebody else's turn, and they all have different requirements. Now, as you can see, all four of these show this book icon at the top, and that means these are thresholds. That means you just have to have these things in order to play the card and get the benefits that are listed down at the bottom. And if you look in the bottom left corner, each of them have this gate to show that they are gateway cards. Now that is important because every single card in this gateway deck is just thresholds. You never spend any resources for playing any of these. That's not the case with some of the other ones. For example, this one over here shows that house in the bottom, and these cards are all ways to spend things in order to get victory points at the end of the game. This would have us spending 6 hops and 6 rye in order to get 10 endgame victory points. Now I don't think we should worry about this at this point, but we should take a look at the other cards that we have in our hand. 
Now, this one right over here says we have to have three hides, three meat, and three wool. And if we have those, we can play this out, and that will gain us another sheep, and we can gain a bonus card. And I'll talk about gaining those soon. Now, this is part of the reason why we picked up that hide, so we just need two more. And because of this card, I think we should take a wool instead of a milk, and we can place that down there. That means we need three meat, two hide, and two more wool in order to play this one out. But we are working towards it. Now, when we look at these other ones, this one says we have to have exactly two planted fields. Well, we are about to plant two fields, which means this will be the case. So we can play this one after we sow these fields, and that will give us the benefit. In this case, that says we can move the planted fields up one row, and we will get a bonus card. So this is something that we are going to be able to do very soon. This one over here has a dark brown background, which means it has something to do with the action spaces on the board. And this says that we can play it as long as any one action space on the board is completely occupied with workers. So that might be something that our opponent does instead of us, and we could still gain these benefits. The last card that we have here says that depending on the amount of hops that we have, we can place a new field into a better row on our board. Now with this in mind, I do think we should plant hops, and in fact, this card is the reason why we spent a turn picking up hops. So let's go ahead and sow these hops onto that spot right over there, and then when it comes to our other option, I think let's just go ahead and sow barley. At the moment, we have two barley, so we can lower this down and then take one from the supply, and we can place it right over there. Now that has finished up our sowing action, and at this point, we can reveal to our opponents that we have this card here. We do indeed have exactly two fields planted, so we can place this in front of us. We can then move the planted fields one row up, which means we will gain another hop and another barley when these harvest. And finally, as you can see in the bottom right corner, that says plus one bonus card. Now we can put this card over to the side and then draw a bonus card from the top of that deck. That deck is right over here, and every time you play Hallertau, you always use this same deck of bonus cards. So we can draw this one and put it into our hand, and as you can see, it shows this orange arrow, and that means in order to play this, we have to spend three hops, and then during each of the income phases for the rest of the game, we will gain one tool into our area. Also, this card would be worth three points to us at the end of the game if we are able to play this. This bonus card works out rather well for us. We are already planning on harvesting hops, which will give us five, which means we'll get the best bonus for that card, and then we can spend those hops to play the other one. That's all going to happen in the future, though. At this point, we are done with our turn. This means yellow can go, and they've decided to send a worker over to this location here. Now, it, as always, goes into the lowermost row, and you may have noticed that the action spots next to these cards only have two rows, whereas the rest of the action spots have three. Now, whenever you place workers next to these cards, you then draw one of that card, and then you also take the first player rooster token. So yellow will add this into their hand and they can take this token. And every time a player goes onto any of these spots, they take this token back. So that means yellow is not guaranteed to be the starting player in the next round. But if we never place workers on any of these spots, then yellow will be. Well, we now get to go again. And I do think that we should get some clay. We currently have three workers and there are five spots on the board that will get us clay. This spot would get us three and that would cost two workers. This would get us one clay, and then we would also place a new field down in the lowest spot on our board in the two area for one worker. This would get us four clay for two workers, and over here we could actually get rid of one of our fields in order to get three clay as well as one jewelry. Now the last option is over here with clay delivery, and that would let us gain clay equal to the current round number. This is the first round, so that would just get one clay, but obviously as the game goes on, this becomes a much more powerful spot. After considering these options, I think let's go for the land sale. So that means we have to spend one of our fields, and then we will gain one jewelry as well as three clay. When we look back over here, we have to get rid of one of our fields, and if it is already sowed with a crop, then we would lose that. Fortunately, we have this field over here, which is the lowest value, and it is not sowed, so we can spend this. We will then gain three clay, and we can track our gaining of one jewel by moving this token over to the one spot on this board. Next up, the yellow player can go, and they're going to move into this clearing. That just takes one worker, and that will gain them one clay, as well as one field that goes into their two spot. That clay will bring them up to five, and they could store more clay by putting another token down into any of these spots. It's worth noting there is no limit to the number of goods that you can have. Now this field will go into the two area of their board, and now they've decided to play their first card. Now this is the farmhouse card that they drew on their last turn, and that says they have to give up all of their crops in their supply except for three. 
Currently, they only have two crops in their supply because the clay up here is not a crop, and this barley has been sowed into the ground. It is not actually in their supply. That means they don't have to get rid of anything, and now this card says they can sow up to three times. Now, they only have these two crops over here, and they've decided to put the rye on the five, and the flax will go over here into the four spot. Now, the final thing that happens is they do get to draw a bonus card, so they can take that from the top of the deck, and now their turn is over. This means it's time for us to go, and we have one worker. Currently, we could place that onto this spot or this other spot on the board. And if we went over here, that would get us this token for the moment, and we could then draw one of these cards here. Now, all of these cards are similar to this one of the same type that we have already that let us spend things in order to get victory points. I'm not sure if that's something we want to focus on just yet. Now, if we look up here, that butchery says we have to give up one of our sheep to then get four meat and two hide. Now, that is certainly a great way for us to move forward on trying to complete this card here, but I also feel like we might want to wait because that sheep will give us some milk later on in the round as long as we don't butcher it right now. The next option is this town hall, and it says you can move a craft building one space to the left in order to get to jewelry. Now, I haven't described moving craft buildings just yet, and I will soon, uh, but suffice to say, this is not a good option for us. So what that means is, I think what we should do is not actually place this worker down, and instead we can do the other option, which says we can send any number of workers back to the supply in order to take a tool for each of those workers. So we can send this one worker over there, and we have gained a tool, and we are going to keep this until the last round of the game, where we could potentially spend it, and I'll talk about how that works later on. Either way, this is a tool that we now have for quite some time. Now we have to put this in our area, and the best spot for it is probably over here. After that, yellow can go, and even though there are quite a few spots they could place these down onto, they've decided to get rid of both of them and take two tools for them instead. So they can place these into their area, and after that, we can look over here and see that we have no more workers, which means we must pass. This means it will go back to yellow, who also must pass because they have no workers. And once all players have passed, that will finish the fourth phase of the game. This means we can move into the fifth phase of the game, where each player is going to draw the farmhouse card that has been laying face down in front of them. So the yellow player can add this one to their hand, and we will add this to our hand. Ooh, that says that we just have to have 11 barley, and if we do, we will gain a sheep. 11 barley is quite a lot. I don't think we're going to get there this turn, but that is certainly something that we can work towards. Now, it's worth noting that some of these farmhouse cards are threshold cards like this one, while others cause us to actually have to spend things to get various rewards, and I'm sure we'll see some of those soon. All right, we can now move on to the sixth phase, where we are going to move every one of our fallow fields up on our board. Now, a field is fallow if it does not have anything on it. So over here, we can see that we have no fields with nothing on them, so we don't do anything over here. But then over there for the yellow player, they have one field that currently does not have anything on it. So that means this will move forward once. And if we look back at this area, it says that one of the fields gets to move forward again. Now, over here, the yellow player only has one field that moved, so that one does get to bump up one more time. If they had three fields, for example, that moved up once, they would choose one of those fields to go up once again. So the yellow player has gotten quite a bit of benefit out of that. This field will be much better for them, and we obviously got nothing for this phase because we planted on all of our fields. After that, it's now time to move into the seventh phase, where we can all simultaneously harvest our planted fields. The way this works is quite simple. We just take the token that is currently on top of that field and we move it over to the left and put it onto that spot so that one planted barley turned into four barley for us. After that, the field that was just harvested will lower down once unless it was already at the two spot, in which case it just stays at the two. So over here, our hops will be harvested and that becomes five hops and then this field will drop. And likewise, over here, the yellow player now has five barley and five rye. Both of these will drop and this will get them four flax. After that, we can move into the eighth phase of the round, where we are all going to milk our sheep. This is quite simple. We all get one milk for every sheep that we currently have on our boards. Over here, we have one sheep, so that will get us one milk. And then over there, we can see our opponents never got any sheep, so they don't gain any milk. Before we move into the next phase, I did mention that players can play cards out whenever they want to, and the yellow player has decided to play this card here. That says they have to have one, three, or four of the farmhouse cards in play, and they currently have one. Now that means they are going to gain zero meat and then two milk. If they had three farmhouse cards in play, then they'd instead get two meat. 
So saving for later is certainly good with this card, but they felt that they needed the milk right now. So they will gain two milk, which they can place right over there, and they can put this into a face down stack of their played cards. All right, it's time for the ninth phase of the round, and this can be done simultaneously for all of the players. Now what this says is we are now going to be paying our goods in order to move our five different craft houses over to the right. Now the cost to move these will vary with the round, and that is shown up here with the most recently vacated spot. As you can see, this says round one, and it says one good, and that means it takes one good to move each of these houses over. Now the good that you have to spend is one that is printed on top of the house, and some of them have restrictions. For example, carpentry here says that when you move this over, you must spend more clay than you do rye, so that means you cannot actually spend rye in the first turn, because obviously it just costs one thing, and if you spend one rye, then you did not spend less than the clay. So in order to move carpentry in the first round, you must spend a clay. Now we can move these over as much as we want to, but as soon as a craft house reaches a boulder, it cannot move anymore without moving the boulder. Now that is where these tools come into play. For every tool that you exhaust, and you can do that by just moving it to a different area and then you gain it back later on, you can move one of these boulders over one spot. So if we spent that to move that over, we could move this craft house over again. But now if we want to move this again, there are two boulders here. So it would take two tools to move those over to then get another bump. So what this effectively means is the first purchase is always one that can be done without tools. The second one will cost one tool and the third and on within a round will take two tools. And this is one reason why hoarding tools is definitely a good idea. So let's start spending some goods. Now this carpentry does cost clay and we have three of it. So let's spend one clay to move that over. Now we are incentivized to move all of these over at least once because as soon as all of them have, this house will slide over and then that will increase the number of workers that we get at the start of the next round. And that will continue to happen until we reach the maximum of 12. And from that point on, we will simply get more and more victory points for pushing the house over more. So it does make sense to try and be able to move all of these at least once in this round. And we can see the brew house has us spending barley and hops, although we must spend more barley. So let's spend one barley to move that over. And then with this cooling house, we have to spend meat or milk. And we have one milk, so we could spend that to move that over. Next up, we have the bakehouse. That needs barley or rye, or you can pay flax, although you can pay a maximum of one flax. Now that's important because as we get later on in the game, the cost to bump these houses is going to increase. In the second round, it's going to be two goods of the applicable types. And in the third round, it is three goods, although we will start to get some discounts and I'll talk about those soon. Now, as we go up, it will be more and more. In the sixth round, you have to spend six goods of the applicable types to move each of these houses over. But again, there are discounts, which I may as well discuss now. So let's zoom on the board and we can see in the third round, it says you can pay three goods or two goods if you use two types. So you get that discount if you are varying things up. When we hit the fourth round, it will cost four goods, but you can spend three goods if you use two types. After that, in the fifth round, you spend five goods or four if you use two types or three if you use three types. Now, obviously, that will never work for the cooling house because that only has two types. But for some of the other ones, like the bakehouse, that would work. And again, you can only spend up to one flax when you consider all of these things. The final one is obviously the sixth round, where it's six, five, or four, depending on the number of types of goods that you spend to move that craft house. So let's focus back out and we can continue to spend our goods. But another thing that we can do is spend our jewelry. As you can see, we have just one jewelry in our box at the moment. And whenever you spend a jewelry, that will automatically pay all of the good costs to move one of these craft houses over. So that jewel effectively counted as one of these goods, which is not that great. And now with that in mind, it does kind of make sense to hold onto this jewel until we get later on in the game, because we could spend that jewel in the sixth round, and that jewel would count for six goods. Uh, we might not want to wait that long, but I think for now, we will hold onto this jewel. Now, another thing that we can do right now is, of course, play cards. And we can see over here that we do not have 11 barley. We've already spent one, but we were at four, or I guess five, and, that, and nowhere close to 11. Now, we can try to plan towards this in the future, but over here, we do have enough hops to play both of these cards, so we should probably do that now before we continue on with this phase. Now, this one says if we have two, three, four, or five hops, then we can place a new field into the two, three, four, or five spot on our board. Currently, we have five hops, which means we can place that on the five spot, and that will let us harvest significantly better in the next round, and then, of course, we can put this into our played cards pile. 
After that, I think let's spend three hops to play this card out. As you can see, we can go from five down to two, and now this is a bonus card. These are special. They have this bar over here, which shows the three phase spot. And that is there to show that in the third phase of each subsequent round of the game, we are going to gain one tool into our supply. We have one right now, so that means that we will automatically get more for the next five rounds of the game. So this is effectively turning three hops into five tools. I don't think we can play any of the rest of the cards that we have, but we can keep moving these craft houses. Now over here, I think let's spend a flax to move the bakehouse over once. And then I would actually like to spend a flax to move this manufacturer over because I don't want to spend the hide and the wool because we are currently saving up to be able to play this card. Now we could do that. We do have this flax here, but if we spend it, then we don't have any flax to plant into fields in the future. So maybe instead of spending a flax for the bakehouse, let's spend a barley. We are trying to get up to 11 barley with this card, but that's something we can work towards in the future. I think spreading this out right now is going to be better. So we spent the barley to move the bakehouse, and now for the manufacturer, let's spend the flax to move that there. So now we have officially moved all of the houses over to the point where there is this gap. We can then slide the house over, and we will gain seven workers in the next round instead of six, so we can do even more stuff. Now at this moment, I do want to move more of these craft houses over because they currently just cost one good and that will go up as we go deeper into the game. At the moment, we have one tool, so let's use that by just putting it down over here and then we can use that to move any of these boulders over once. You know what? I think let's just go for carpentry. We can slide that there and then spend another one of our clay, which lets us move that forward once. And obviously the main house doesn't move because there is no gap, but we are working toward that. Now, at this point, we cannot build any more bumps with these craft houses because they've all run into the boulders, and we don't have any more tools to move the boulders over. With us done, we can now look over to the yellow player. Of course, they would normally do the ninth phase simultaneously to us. Now, let's see how they spend their resources. They do currently have quite a few up at the top. They'll start by spending one clay to move that. They will then spend a barley to move their brew house and a milk to move their cooling house. It looks like they harvested some flax, so they have quite a bit of that. And because of that, they are going to spend a flax to move their bakehouse and spend another flax to move their manufacturer. Now, this is going to slide over, which means they will get seven workers in the next round. And then they've decided to spend this tool in order to move that boulder. That lets them spend a clay to slide their carpentry over. And then they'll spend this tool to move their boulder next to the cooling house over. That way, they can spend their last milk to slide that over there. So at this point, they are done moving their craft houses, and that means we can all simultaneously move into the 10th and final phase of the round, where we are going to reset all of the boulders so that they are two and four spaces away from each of the craft houses. Uh, thematically, I like to think of this as little boulder elves coming in the night, shifting everything over, so that means that this would go to two and four spaces over, and the same will happen for all of these rocks. The rules don't say anything about boulder elves, but I just like thinking about them moving these things around. Now, of course, we are going to do the same thing, which means we can slide these up there, and then the rest of these are pretty simple. Well, that's finished up the 10th phase, and that means the first round of the game is over. So we can move into the second round, and once again, we will do the first phase, where in a one, two, or three player game, we draw the top quadrant card, and if it was a four player game, we just remove all of the workers from the top row of all of the actions. Now, this is the card that we flipped, and it is a two-player game, so that means all of the top workers in the first quadrant will be removed, and then when we look down into the fourth quadrant, that will also remove these three here. If this had shown the third quadrant, then in the land sale, only these top two would have been removed, but of course, that is not what happened here. After that, it's time to retrieve workers. That means we can both take our next farmhouse card, and if there was a sheep on it, we would lose that sheep. And now we can each put seven workers on these cards because we both have a seven showing up in our window. After that, it's time for the third phase of the second round, and this is going to be the first income phase that we get to do so far in the game. Now, this says that every single bonus card that we have will now generate the income that is printed on top of it. Now, we have played one bonus card, which is this one here, and that says that during the income, we will gain one tool. So we can take one tool from the supply and add it to the other tool that we already had. I didn't mention it, but in this 10th phase, we also all refresh our tools so that we can use them again in the following ninth phase of the next round.
That's the only bonus card that we have, and over here we can see the yellow player doesn't have any, although technically they should. Now, it's worth noting you can play cards whenever you want to, and you can play a card in this third phase that is a bonus card and immediately gain the benefit of it. Although, in this case, yellow meant to play this card in the harvest phase of the last round, and we're just going to say that they did. I just missed it over there in their hand. Now that says they have to spend three rye that you just harvested, and they did indeed harvest five rye. So they should have played this right then, and we're going to retroactively fix that. So they should have sent this from five down to two, and then that says that during the income phases, they can sow one rye onto any empty field. So they're going to do that, which means they can lower this by one to take another token, and they'll place that rye onto this field here as that part of their income. Now that I have fixed that, it looks like we are both done with our income, and it's now time for the fourth phase of the round. I think what I'm going to do is fast forward through that for the second round, and we'll pick things back up again during the income phase of the third round of the game. All right, we are now at the income step of the third round of the game. It looks like our opponent was able to get up to eight workers, and we only got up to seven, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, and at this point, I do think that we should play a card from our hand. Now, we picked up a bonus card. This one right over here says we have to discard three cards from our hand, but then as part of our income, we get to draw a gateway card at the start of each uh, round for the rest of the game. Now, that does mean we have to get rid of three cards, but I think that is okay. We picked up this card, and that says we could spend one of our jewelry to place one or two workers out onto an action space to use it. And you'll notice up at the top, that shows a restriction. It shows all of the phases except for the fourth phase, which is when actions normally happen. So this card can only be played not in the fourth phase. I think let's just go ahead and get rid of these, though. We were planning to work towards this a bit, but I do like the idea of getting some gateway card income going. So we will discard all of these and then play this out. And then we are going to keep this in our hand. It's the only card that we have left. So we should probably focus on drawing more cards. Now, at this point, we can take our income. This says that we will gain one tool, and that says we will draw one gateway card. So we can take each of those. And this means we are up to three tools, and the gateway card that we have says if we have two, five, or seven each of the flax, the barley, and the rye, then we will get one hops and one clay, and then the number of bonus cards that we get to draw will be dependent on how many of each that we have. We do indeed have at least two of the flax, the rye, and the barley, but we don't have five of each, and getting up to five of each will be enough to draw another bonus card, so I think we're going to keep that in mind and maybe try to play towards this. Over here, our opponent still just has this income card that lets them sow one rye, and they're going to sow this one, and they figure that they'll put it onto the five. All right, it's now time for the action phase, and we have this marker because we were the last one to draw a card in the last round. Now, I think we should start by spending one cube, and we can place it over there in order to draw a bonus card. This one says that if we give up three of our fields, then we can gain an income of adding a level five field onto our board. Now, three fields is quite a lot, especially considering we were able to get all of our fields up to the four level in the last round of the game. But we will keep this in mind, and maybe we will pick up some cheap fields to then pay for this to get access to more of those five level fields. After that, yellow can go, and they're going to spend one worker to do the fertilizing action. That lets them move up to two of their empty fields to row five, and then they can sow one crop into an empty field. So they're going to move these two up to the top, and then they've decided to sow some flax into that field there. All right, we are next to go, and at the moment we don't have any clay, so I think we should take this opportunity to spend a single worker in order to go to the tool shed and pick up four. We could go to the clay delivery, but that would only give us three because it's currently the third round of the game, and four is obviously better than three. So we'll place that right up there. And now it's once again the yellow player's turn. They have decided to go to this weekly market. That is going to gain them a sheep as well as one meat. The sheep can go right over there, and they did already have a meat, so they're just going to move that up once on their tracker. Well, we are next, and I think we should probably spend one of our workers over here in the sheep market to get a rather cheap sheep. Gaining a hide is also good, so we will take that hide as well as a sheep. And that sheep is going to go over here. As you can see, we now have three. We did have one hide already, so let's just move that up to the two spot. Well, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they've decided to send one worker to the small trade area. That will gain them two crops. They will also get a milk or a wool, and then one of their sheep can gain one round. 
well, the two crops, they're going to take hops as well as barley. And then they would like some milk. So they can place that down here. Finally, they can move one of their sheep one space forward. And the way this works is you simply move that sheep over to the right. That means they can move this one over there, and then that sheep will be lost at the start of the sixth round unless it is moved. But they've decided to move this sheep because when it goes to the right, it actually goes right down here to the bottom. Now that means this sheep is protected for the rest of the game, and at the end of the game, each sheep down there will be worth one victory point. All right, it's time for us to go, and I did say that we wanted to draw some more cards, but I also think we should take advantage of this sheep shearing location. Now we can also take a glance at this sheep breeding, which we haven't seen happen just yet. When you activate this spot, you can spend two or four milk in order to gain one or two sheep. Now we're going to do sheep shearing, and that says that we will gain one wool per sheep that we currently have, and then one of our sheep will gain one round. Now this means we could save this sheep right now, but as you can see, we have a sheep on that card, and at the start of the next round, that sheep will be lost if we don't advance it at this point. So I think let's do that, and we do have three sheep, which means we will gain three wool. We had one, so that will bring our wool all the way up to four. Next up, it's the yellow player's turn, and they're going to go to the town hall. That says they can move a craft building backwards one space in order to gain two jewelry. Now you can only do this if there is space for that building to move, so obviously they could not move this brew house over to the left because this house is next to it. The cooling house is currently the only craft building they could move to the left, so they will slide that over, and it means they have to spend these resources to get it back to where it was. But, of course, as a benefit, they will gain two jewelry. All right, we are next, and we currently have three workers. Now we have five fields that are currently empty, so we could send all three of these workers over to the farming spot in order to sow four times. We could also send two of our workers to cultivation to sow three times and then have one worker left over. Now with that worker, we could potentially do a clay delivery. We could also go here and pick up another one of these uh, scoring cards. And of course, we could turn that worker into a tool if we wanted to. So we have to decide, is that extra sewing action worth not having another worker to play with? You know what? I think let's go for it. Let's spend all three of these up here on the farming spot. So we could take one new field and put it onto the five location, or we could sew four times, and that is what we're going to do. So let's look down here, and we are working towards this card. Now, if we are able to get seven each of the flax, the barley, and the rye, then that would get us two more bonus cards, which is certainly a great amount of card draw, but that's a decent amount of stuff. I think let's go ahead and start by sewing flax. So we can place that right over here, and that means we will frustratingly be at four plus two or six, which is one away from the seven there. Uh, let's go ahead and keep moving on, though. Let's plant some of the rye. We can place that there, and that means after the harvest, we will be at seven of that. And for the third planting, let's put some barley down. We can put that down and place this here. So that means as far as barley is concerned, we will have four plus four or eight, and we can sow one more crop. You know what? I think let's sow another flax. We can lower this here and place that on there. So after this harvest, we will have everything that we need to complete this card to its fullest extent to get two bonus cards, which is great. And I think it's likely after that harvest, once all of these shift down, we will get rid of three of them to initiate this income of gaining more five level fields. But we'll have to see how that works later on. Now, for the moment, we have finished this action. And in fact, we are out of workers. So yellow gets to go and they can keep taking turns until they have decided to pass. Well, they've decided to send one worker to clay delivery. That gets them clay equal to the current round, which is three. So that will gain them three clay, which will bring them from one up to four. Next up, they've decided to send one of their workers here. That is a card draw spot. Specifically, these are ones that let you spend things to gain victory points. And since they went to a card spot, that does mean they take the rooster token. After that, they are going to send these two workers over to Busy Weekend. That lets them gain a milk or a wool, and they're going to gain the wool, and they also get to sow two crops. They've decided to sow hops, as well as another barley. Well, we've both passed, so we can move on to the fifth phase where we both draw our farmhouse card. The one that we drew says that we can spend one jewelry in order to gain four hide or five wool, and we draw a bonus card. Now, if you remember what I said earlier, the deck of the farmhouses that I mentioned is specifically oriented towards jewelry, which means you oftentimes spend jewelry to get things, and that is why you see cards like this one. Next up, we have the sixth phase where we will raise all of the fallow fields, and one of those fields will go up twice. 
So this one will go up once, and then they'll double bump that. And over here, we only have one. And unfortunately, we can't push it up anymore because it's already at the five. So we have uh, not been able to take the full advantage of that effect. But either way, I think we're doing just fine. After that, it's now time for us all to harvest. And then we are going to milk our sheep. We have three sheep, which means we will gain three milk. And we didn't have any already, so we can place this on the three. Over here, our yellow opponent has two sheep, so they will gain two milk. All right, we've arrived at the ninth phase where we can spend our goods in order to move these craft houses. Although before we do that, let's take a look at our hand of cards. Now, this card we can play in this moment. Again, we need two, five, or seven of each of these three in order to gain these benefits. We just need two in order to get this stuff, but the more stuff that we have, the more bonus cards we draw. As you can see, we currently have four plus four plus one or nine flax. We also have eight barley and we have seven of the rye. So when we cash this in, we get the best benefit. Now this says we will gain one hops and we will also gain one clay. So that means we can move that up. And then since we did the third option, that means we are going to draw two bonus cards into our hand. So we can take these from the top of the deck, and this one says that if we have six wool, we can play this one as an income to gain one wool each round. And that one says if we have no fields in the second, third, or fourth rows, which are these over here, then we can play that out to increase our income by one milk. Now this is certainly an interesting card. At the moment, we have four wool, but we also were able to draw this card here. I think let's go ahead and play this in this moment. We have one jewel, so we can spend that in order to play this. And with it, let's gain five wool. We had four, so let's take five more, which means we can just place that over there. And then that will get us a bonus card, so let's draw one more. That's going to be this one. We need to have six meat, and we currently don't have any, and that would increase our meat income by one. Now at this point, we can play that income card because we have six or more wool. In fact, we have nine, so we can place that over here and our income just got increased by one wool per round. While we are here, let's keep playing cards. This one says we have to get rid of three of our fields, so let's get rid of these three here. And then as part of our income, we can add a field onto the fifth row. Now we can see this works out pretty well when it comes to this card here, which says we have to have no fields in the second, third, or fourth row. Currently we have one field there, so we are pretty motivated in the next round of the game to get rid of this so that that is the case, and we can play that out to increase our milk production. Either way, we, I think, are now done playing cards. That means we can start spending this massive pile of resources to move these crafts over. I hope that we have enough tools. I'm starting to wonder that maybe three wasn't enough, but we'll just have to see. Now, before we actually spend anything, let's look back over here where it says that each of the craft house bumps is going to take three goods or two goods if we use two different types. Unfortunately, we cannot take advantage of that discount for the carpenter and the brew house because if we used two types, then we would have one and one and you need to play strictly more clay than rye for the carpentry and more barley than hops for the brew house. So each of these bumps will cost three goods right now. Well, we currently have five clay, so let's spend three of that to move this over. And we have eight barley, so let's spend three of that to move that one over as well. Now we can see with this cooling house, if we have meat and milk, then we can move this over for a discount. Although unfortunately, it looks like we did not plan ahead for that very well. Uh, we do have three milk, so we will spend all three and we don't take advantage of that discount. And that's the only time that we can afford to move the cooling house this round. Next up, let's move the bakehouse, and we should certainly spend one flax, and then I think let's spend one of our rye. That way we used two different types, so we only have to spend two, which means we can slide that over for two instead of three goods. We can do a similar thing down here for the manufacturer. At the moment, we have a ton of wool, so let's spend one wool and one of our flax to move that over. Now that's going to slide our house over, and at this point, let's spend a tool, and we can use that to move that over there. Let's now spend another wool and another flax, and that means that we can slide the manufacturer over again. Now, it is really unfortunate that we did not plan ahead to be able to move the cooling house again. Obviously, we spent a jewelry, which we could have used to bump that, but I think it was better for playing out those cards. This does mean that we are going to have nine workers in the next round, whereas if we could move the cooling house even one more time, that would have unlocked ten workers instead. Well, we have two more tools, so I think we should keep on going. 
Let's spend that tool to move that boulder over. And then we can spend a flax as well as I think one of our barley and that will slide that house over. You know what? I think let's spend a rye instead of the barley. We have one tool left, so let's spend that and move this boulder over, and then let's spend three of our barley, which brings us down to two, and then we can slide that there. So that is all of the movements that we can do because we have run out of tools over here. That is a little unfortunate because we do still have quite a bit of uh, the goods that we could have spent to move these over. I'm doing the best that I can, but I think I probably could have played that round a little bit better. Let's glance over here and see how the yellow player does when they move their craft houses. They're going to start by moving their carpenter, which is going to cost them three bricks. And then they'll move their brew house, which will cost three barley. Obviously, you don't need to do these in order, but that does kind of make sense for the moment. Next up, they're going to move their cooling house by spending one meat and one milk. Since they used two different types, they spend two goods instead of three, so that will go there. You know what? They're going to do that again. They have another space until a boulder because the cooling house is the one that they moved backwards with the town hall ability earlier in the round. So they will spend one meat and one milk, which brings that over there. Moving on, they will move their bakehouse for one flax as well as one of their rye. And then they'll move their manufacturer over for one flax and then this wool. So again, they get a discount because they use two different resources. After that, this slides over. So our opponent is at 10 workers, whereas we are at nine. And in fact, they still have five tools over here that they can use. They're going to start by spending this one and they can move that boulder. And they'll slide the brew house over by spending three of their barley. After that, they'll move their bakehouse boulder over for a tool, and then they will slide that over for a flax as well as one of their rye. At this point, I just remembered that yellow did gain a farmhouse card, and they've actually decided to use that. Uh, you can play this at any point, and that means they do have to get rid of one of their sheep, so they will get rid of this one that was in danger in a couple of rounds, and then they are going to gain two clay as well as two more tools. They already had five, so that brings them up to seven, and then they get to draw another bonus card. Now they're going to spend one of these tools to move that over, and they can spend three of their clay to slide the carpenter over. Well, things are going quite well for them. They are now going to spend another tool to slide that bowler over, and they only have two flax. Now, they could have paid things a little bit differently to have three flax, but they also don't want to spend all of their flax because it is good to have at least one left over to then plant it out into a field for the next round. So instead, they're going to spend one of their jewelry to slide that over, and that means the entire house will slide over, and now our opponent has 11 workers compared to our nine. At this point, they have three tools left, and they are going to spend two of them to move these two boulders over, and then they are going to spend one flax as well as one rye to move their bakehouse again. So that will go over there. And they have one tool left, but no good way to actually use it. So they are now done moving this stuff over. That means they can reset by taking all of these numerous tools back. I'm definitely envious of all of the tools that they have. And then their boulders will reset. Now it's worth noting that once a craft house gets far enough over, these boulders might actually fall off the side, and it's possible the boulders could make it back onto the board if the player moves their craft house over to the left and then leaves it there for a round. We also get to reset. We have just three of these tools, and then our boulders will go over. And it's now time for the first phase of the fourth round. That means we can draw the top quadrant card, and that says that we are going to remove all of the cubes from the top rows in the first and second quadrants. So that means this will go. These three will go, which is good. If those hadn't been removed, then no one would even be able to use the farming spot in the next round of the game. After that, in the second quadrant, these will go away, as will all of these. In the second phase, we can bring out the new farmhouse card, and there were no sheep on it, so we don't lose those. We were able to scoot that sheep over and save it. Now, it might be hard to save both of these sheep, so instead, it might make sense to slaughter one or both of them. We'll just have to see how the game plays out. Next up, we are going to take nine workers and place those on top of this farmhouse card. Over here, our opponent does not lose any sheep either, and they are going to gain 11 worker cubes. Next up, it's time for income, and our opponent is not doing that great as far as income is concerned. Uh, they do get to sow one of their rye, and they figure they might want something else to be at five, so they'll put this at the four. That's the only income they have, and they're not going to play any more of those bonus cards right now. 
Meanwhile, over here, we have four income that we get. Our opponent is doing better in a lot of ways in this game, but at least we have an income edge. Now, this says that we are going to gain a new field, and it will go into the fifth row, so we will place it there. This one says we can draw a gateway card from the deck, and that one says if we have three, seven, or eleven cards of the same deck in play, then we can gain one, two, or three jewels. We can look over here and see that we have played four gateway cards so far, so we could play this just to get one jewel if we wanted to, and we could save it until we get to maybe seven of those gateway cards to get more. We'll just have to see if it makes sense to hold on to this. The next thing that happens is we are going to gain a tool as part of our income, and finally this will give us a wool. Alright, it's now time for the action phase, and I think I'm once again going to fast forward. In this case, I'm going to go through the 4th and 5th rounds quickly, and we'll pick things up in the income phase of the 6th round of the game, and then play through to the end. Alright, we are now at the income phase of the 6th and final round of the game, and as you can see, we both are getting a decent amount of stuff from this phase, so let's start by looking over here. The first thing that we will gain is a field on the 5th row. Then this says we can draw the top gateway card, and that one says if we have three, four, or six tools, we can gain a clay as well as a rye. Now, depending on the number of tools we have, we will draw more bonus cards, and we have actually collected a significant number of tools as we went through the game. At the moment, we actually have seven of them, so let's immediately play this card. That will gain us one clay as well as a rye, and since we have the best version, that will get us two bonus cards. So let's take a look at these cards, and this one says if we spend a wool, then we will get a point, and we will increase our meat income by one. We do have a wool over here, and it's worth noting that we did pick up this uh, point card, which says if we give up 12 wool, we will get 10 points. That is a lot, and we have needed to spend our wool to move the craft buildings over. And considering we currently don't have any sheep, I don't think this is likely to happen. So let's go ahead and spend that wool in order to play this out. Uh, this one right here says we can spend two of our numerous tools in order to gain a uh, hop and barley income. Uh, now, seven does seem like a lot of tools, and we are going to get another one. And at this stage of the game, I think we can afford to get rid of two. So we will return these back to the supply, and we can place that over there. And I did mention earlier on in the tutorial that in the sixth round of the game, these tools are no longer permanent. Now what I mean by that is when you use these tools to move boulders in the sixth round of the game, they actually break and they go back to the supply. That's important because there are various cards that you can spend to get rid of these for points, and at the end of the game, we will add up all of our fields, our goods, and tools, and divide those by five to get more points. So if we use these, we lose them, and at the moment, we don't actually need too many of these. So yeah, I think it makes sense to spend these two to play that card out. Well, at this point, we've just done two income cards, so this one is going to gain us a tool, that one will gain us a wool, and that will get us a milk. Next up, this will get us yet another field, and that will be placed onto the fourth row. And after that, this will gain us one meat. The final thing that we will get is over here, which is going to be one hops as well as one barley. Over here, our opponent will gain one rye, and then they can plant it. They've decided to plant it over here. They have a bunch of fields, but they have been harvesting them pretty hard, and they've been going down and down as the game went on, to the point where these fields are actually not that effective. This one right over here is now going to give them one meat. That is going to gain them one sheep as an income, and that will increase their hops by one. All right, it's now time for the final action phase of the game, and we get to go first. So let's take a look at our cards, and as you can see, our fields are pretty good, although a big part of that is because we are gaining good fields as part of our income. We can see over here that we are at 12 workers, and we have not been very even with moving these craft buildings over. As you can see, we've played quite a few cards so far, and that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the gateway cards. That's important, because remember, this one says we will get 1, 2, or 3 jewels if we've played 3, 7, or 11 gateway cards. So we have eight, which means we are just three away from getting the best uh, payout for this. And if we look at our hand, we have uh, no other gateway cards at this point. Uh, we can pick up one more from the board, but I don't think there's any way we're going to get up to 11. So I think let's just start things off by playing this. So that is going to gain us two jewelry. And with that in mind, we can now look at this card that we have. This is a farmhouse card, and it says we have to pay one barley for every space left in our jewelry box. 
Now, players can only hold up to 10 jewelry, and right now we have seven spots left. So if we spent seven barley, then we would gain six hide, two meat, and we could draw another bonus card. And remember, those bonus cards, when you play them out, will give victory points. It is worth noting we are not going to be doing any more income phases for the rest of the game, but gaining victory points is a good thing. Now, I'm not entirely sure if spending seven barley is worth it, although if during this action phase we are able to get more jewels, that will make this card cheaper. When we look at the other cards, we have this one, which I think we are not going to be able to play in this game, and we have this income card that says if we get up to six meat, we will have a meat income, and we get six points. Obviously, there will be no more incomes, but getting six points is great. Currently, we have three meat, and unfortunately, we don't have any sheep to slaughter to get a bunch of meat. We actually lost a sheep in the beginning of the fifth round, I believe. We weren't able to slaughter it before it went away or save it. Uh, the last card we have of note is this one. That says if we spend six rye and six of our hops, we get ten victory points. And at the moment, we have seven rye and four hops, so I think this is definitely within reach. All right, let's take the first action, and we do have 12 workers just like our opponent. And I think they are very interested in going to the land sale. They have a bunch of those fields that are currently value 2, so they're not very good for them. Our fields are better, but I do think that going over here to make that more expensive for them is important, and that gains us a jewel, which will make it cheaper for us to play this card out, which will get us some meat, and that meat could help us play that card there. So I think this is important. Now that does mean we have to remove a field, and then we gain a jewel and 3 clay. Let's get rid of this field there. Three clay will bring us up to five, and then we can move this up. So we now have four jewelry. Next up, yellow can go, and they have decided they need to do a small trade. That's going to give them two crops, as well as a milk or a wool, and they can move one of their sheep once. In this case, they are going to take two barley for the two crops, and then they will take one wool. I suppose they can put that barley there. Obviously, they don't move any of their sheep, because all of them are safe down here in the corral. Well, we are next, and we have a lot of carpentry that we need to do, so I think let's spend two of our workers to go to the clay delivery. That gives us clay equal to the round number, so that is six clay. We can mark that by putting a five up there and one down below. Next up, yellow has decided to spend two of their workers to butcher one of their sheep to get four meat as well as two hide. So this sheep goes away. The four meat will bring them up to five, and the two hide will bring them up to three. And after that, they are going to play this bonus card, which says they need to have three hide. That is going to give them three points, and it would have given them one hide during income, but again, there won't be any more income phases in this game. After that, they're going to play another card. This one says they need to have seven, five, three, one, or zero flax, and also zero, one, two, three, or four hide. In this case, they have one flax, which means they need to have three hide, and they do indeed. So that is going to get them two jewelry, and they can draw another bonus card. Currently, they were at three jewelry, so that will bring them up to five. And it is worth noting that at the end of the game, every jewelry that you don't spend is going to be worth one victory point. In addition to that, they do get to draw a bonus card, so they'll take this one here. All right, it's now our turn, and we are planning on getting these two cards played out. This needs six meat, and we currently have three, so three plus two is five, which means we do need one more meat to make this combo work. So let's go ahead and send two of our workers over to the weekly market. That will get us one meat as well as one sheep, and if this sheep survives, then it will get us a milk, and it will get us a victory point. So we can place that there and gain one meat. Next up, yellow is going to spend two of their workers to go to the nursery, and they are going to take three clay. So they'll place that there. All right, we get to go again, and I think we pretty badly need to get at least one flax so that we could sow it into one of our fields. Currently, we don't have any, and we don't have any cards that would give those to us. We could take our chances by going over here to a gateway, I suppose, or we could just go to the small trade, which would get us two crops. We could go to the nursery, which would get us three, but that would cost us three of our workers. And I think the small trade is probably going to be the best bet for us. So we can go over there and get two crops as well as one milk or one wool. In this case, I think the milk will be more important. And then for the two crops, let's take a flax as well as a barley. All right, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to draw a gateway card. And now we can go again, and I think we should definitely go to cultivation with two of our workers so that we could sow three of our fields. Currently, we only have three fields, so that works out pretty well. Let's sow some barley up there, some flax onto that spot there, and then 
Let's go with another barley. Actually, wait a second. We need to have six hops in order to play this card. So I guess we're going to sow hops. At this point, yellow can go again, and they're going to spend one worker to sheep shearing, which will get them one wool per sheep that they have. They currently have three, so that is three wool, bringing them up to four. And then they are going to play this gateway card they just picked up, which says they have to have at least two wool. They do indeed, so that is going to get them one milk, and then they can draw a bonus card. After that, it's time for us to go again, and we have three workers left. Now we could use these to go to essentially any of the spots on the board. The only places that are full are three out of the four cards. We could send two cards to come over here and to draw a bonus card. It's possible we might be able to fulfill it and get more points, or we could do something else with these workers. You know, I think the best thing for us to do is to go to the town hall to move one of our craft buildings once to the left to get two more jewels. Let's move this one over and then two jewels will bring us up to six and we now only have four empty slots in our jewel box which means the cost for this card just went down by two barley. In fact we can now play this card and I think let's go for it. That means we have to spend four barley and we have four right over here so we can get rid of that. This will then get us six hide so we can move that up once and place this one on top of that for five and then we get two more meat which brings this up once and we can put one down over there. In addition to that, this is going to get us another bonus card. So this is the card that we draw, and we have to have no empty fields, and we don't. So that worked out really great. It is not going to ever give us any hops, but it is going to give us two victory points. I think we should keep playing cards. This one says we have to have six meat, and we do currently have six meat, so we can play this one out, and that is worth six points to us at the end of the game. All right, that finished our turn, and we are now done playing actions for this final round of the game. But it looks like yellow does have four workers left to use. It looks like they have decided to send these two workers to Busy Weekend. They can take a milk or a wool, and they can seed two fields. They've decided to take the milk, and then they are going to seed two fields with hops. So that means they can lower this down twice, and they will put a hop there as well as there. They still have two workers left, and they're going to send one to sheep breeding, which says if they spend two milk, they will get one sheep, or they could spend four milk to gain two. They currently have four milk, so they're going to spend all four of it to gain two sheep, and of course, when the sheep milking phase comes along, each of these will give them one milk back, so they essentially lost two milk in the exchange, and remember, each sheep is worth one point at the end of the game. The final thing yellow is going to do is to go to the clearing action. That's going to get them a level two field as well as one clay. So they can place that there and gain the clay. And now we are all done with the action phase. This means that the fifth phase happens where we each get to draw our farmhouse card. This one says if we have more sheep than we have fields, we could play this out. We would get two meat and a bonus card. At the moment, we have three fields and one sheep, so that is not the case. Next up, we have phase six, where all of the fallow fields will go up once and one will go up again. It's worth noting the level of these fields does not actually matter when it comes to endgame victory points. After that, we can all harvest. And then we can milk our sheep. Yellow has five sheep, so they gain five milk. And we have one sheep, so that will get us one milk. All right, it's now time for us to move our craft tiles for the final time in the game. And before we do that, I think I'd like to play this card to make sure we don't spend those resources that we need. This says we have to spend six hops and we have seven. So that means we are going to go down to just one. And we also need to spend six of our rye and we have seven of that as well. So that means we go down to one rye in our area. And this card will be worth 10 points to us at the end of the game. We just have these two cards left in our hand, and it doesn't look like we're going to be playing them in this game, so now we can focus on spending our goods to move our craft houses. We do have six jewels, and remember we can spend one jewelry to move a craft house, so we have quite a few options here. The other thing to keep in mind is that whenever we spend a tool in the sixth and final round of the game to move a boulder, we actually lose that tool instead of keeping it in our area. Well, let's start with carpentry, and as you can see in the sixth round, we have to spend six goods, or five goods if we use two types, or four goods if we use three types. Carpentry only has two goods, so we have to use five, and we have to spend more of the clay than we can spend with our rye. We only have one rye, so I guess we could spend that and then spend four of our clay, and that will move this over once. Next up, let's move this cooling house. That is going to take five goods if we use both of these types, 
we have four milk and we have six meat. So let's go ahead and spend three of our meat and two milk to move this over once. That's going to slide this over. And we went from 18 points to 34 points, which is great. But you'll also notice we just covered up 15 victory points worth of these symbols, which no longer count for us. That means we gained 16 and lost 15, so technically that's just plus one victory point. Well, it looks like we have enough stuff to do that again, so let's spend one of our tools, and it will break because this is the sixth round of the game, to move that boulder over. And then we can spend three of our meat and two of our milk to pay the five that we need to move that over there. Well, let's move on to our bakehouse. Currently, we don't have any rye, but we do have barley as well as some flax. So let's spend a flax, and we can only spend one. And then we have to spend four of our barley because we don't have any rye to spend to make this cheaper. We have five barley right now, so spending four is going to bring us down to one, and then that will slide over. After that, let's do manufacture. Now we have three wool and uh, seven hides as well as three flax, so let's definitely spend all of these so that we only have to spend four stuff total. Considering we have a bunch of the hides, let's spend two of those and then one wool and one flax to move that there. Next up, let's spend one of our tools and it will break in order to move that boulder. And then that is just going to cost us six of our clay because we don't have any more rye to make a discount there. At the moment, we have seven clay, so we can spend six of that to slide that over. And once again, you can see there's 15 points that we're going to cover up. And we went from 34 to 50. So we once again went up by 16 and down by 15. So we just gained one more point there. Now we can continue to move these if we want. We do have four of these tools left. And of course we have six of this jewelry that we can spend. Every jewelry we don't spend is worth a point. But as you can see when you move these over, that does get three points, which is certainly better than one. I do think we should spend our goods first though, because every good is worth one-fifth of a point. Now this manufacturer over here can be done at a discount. We can spend four goods because we have three types. So let's spend a flax as well as a wool and then two hide. And that will move that over there to its final spot. At this point, I don't think we have enough goods to move any of these over anymore. But we can spend one, two, three of our tools to move each of these boulders. And then we can spend three of our jewels to move these to the end. So that means this will move over one more time, covering up 15 victory points and taking us from 50 to 70. So that right there was actually a five point game for us. Well, we can't move these over anymore, so we are done with this phase. At the same time we were doing that, so was our opponent. They are going to start by moving their carpentry over. They are going to spend four of their clay as well as one of their rye. And then they're going to play this card. That says they have to have six hops, and they have three, four, five, six. So that would increase their income by one rye, and it's worth three points to them at the end of the game. Next up, they are going to move their cooling house. They have two goods, and if they spend both, they only have to spend five goods. So they are going to spend one, two, three meat, and two of their milk to move that over to its final spot. After that, they're going to move manufacturer over once. They are going to spend all three of the types, so they have to spend four total. They are going to spend two of their wool, one of the hide, and then this flax to make that happen. After that, we can see they don't have enough barley to move this brew house over. They would need three and then two hops. They have the hops, but they only have two barley. Now, they're just going to spend a jewel in order to move that over, and then that will slide over as well. And at this point, they're going to spend one of their tools, which will break, to move that boulder. And they're going to do that again, moving this boulder over as well. So these will go back to the main supply. After that, they're going to spend another jewelry to slide that over. And then we can see they don't actually have enough goods to move this manufacturer over with the goods. They have two hide and two wool, and they would need five goods total because they don't have any flax. So they're going to spend another jewelry to move that over, which means they have also gotten to the very end of the track, and they cannot move any more of their craft houses. Now they're not done because they have some cards to play. They have this one that says if they spend four of their tools, they will get six victory points. And they happen to still have four tools over here. So they can return these to the supply and put this in front of them for those victory points. 
Next up, they wanted to play these cards. This would require them to get rid of all eight of the fields, and they would need to get two more. And if they'd done that, then they would have no fields in two, three, or four to play this out. So if they had pulled that off, that would have been 16 extra victory points to them, but they weren't able to get enough fields to actually make that combo work. So they are going to not play these cards along with these other three cards. They're actually ending the game with five unplayed cards compared to our two. Well, at this point, we've finished the sixth and final round, which means the game has come to an end. That means it's time to count up our scores, and the game does come with this scoring pad to help us out. Now, we can start off by gaining all of the victory points for our houses. Now, those are going to be the points that show up in the window, as well as any victory points that show up over here if we hadn't made it all the way to the end. For example, if it was like that, then the yellow player would get 50 plus 9, but obviously they were able to get all the way to the end, so they get 70, and we were also able to get all the way to the end which means we also get 70 victory points. It's worth noting that I've played this game a few times and players do not always get to the end like this. I'm kind of surprised both of the players were able to make that happen in this play. So we can write 70 down for each of these and then we will each get one point for every sheep that we have. We currently have one sheep, so that's going to be one point. And our opponent has five, so that is five victory points. Next up, we will get one point for every jewelry we did not spend. The yellow player has two left over, and over here, we actually have three left over, so that means we get three points there. After that, we are now going to add up all of our fields, our goods, and our tools that are left over. We will then divide that by five and round down to get victory points for that. Let's start off with yellow. They have one, two, three, four, five, six fields over here. They also have no tools. And then when it comes to goods, it looks like they have six on that. Then two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve over there, and one more here. All told, they have 25 things for their fields, goods, and tools. When they divide that by five, that will perfectly give them five victory points. Next up, we can look over here. We have one tool. We have three fields, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight goods remaining. So we have 12 things, and we can divide that by five and round down, which means we just get two victory points. Now, the final thing that we get points for are every single card that we played that has victory points in the bottom corner. We can start with ourselves, and as you can see, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven cards that show victory points on them. So we can count up all of these points, and all told, that is 44 more victory points for us. Next up, we can see the yellow player played 8 cards with victory points on them, and all told, that is 31 victory points. The last thing we have to do is add up all of the points, and as you can see, we ended with 120, while our yellow opponent had 113, so we have won the game by just 7 victory points, and that completes one full 2-player game of Hallertau, and that will also bring this tutorial to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play the game. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.